John, empty wallet. You don't have all day to be pouring through this thing while your silly friend eats shaving cream. You already wasted hours staring at mysterious things happening in clouds. Time to take a rapid inventory. John, examine contents. Look at all this fatherly loot. An inviting pile of pipes. A somewhat less inviting pile of razor blades. A spare car. An assortment of shoes, hats, and ties. Several issues of the serious jester. Ticket stubs to Cirque du Soleil. You would prefer to forget what happened that day. Oh, he was just so embarrassing. A briefcase full of fatherly documents, a variety of photographs, a laptop computer, ten tons of pipe tobacco, and a lighter. John, examine photographs. The wallet unsurprisingly contained a series of sentimental photographs of when you were young. Some of these photos appear to have jokes written on the back. Others, cake recipes. He also kept a series of portraits of some of his favorite comedians. Some are understandable. Harry Anderson goes without saying. Bill Cosby? Living fatherly legend? But his interest in Mr. Foxworthy always struck you as a little lame. Those redneck jokes were so corny and stupid. You secretly suspected your father was mostly arrested by the man's mustache. Maybe he fantasized about shaving the man's egregious furry lip. This seems like a reasonable theory to you. John, examine laptop. Hooray, a computer! You have been dying for a way to talk to your friends again. He bought this laptop at the Dadley Depot, an incredibly boring store established to furnish dignified gentlemen everywhere with dull, fatherly goods. It was always so boring when he dragged you there. You have no idea who this douchebag is. Who's this douchebag is what you ask every time you see his smug face. Maybe you're being unfair to the man, though. Some guy named Crosby, you guess? Who cares? He's so boring. John, clean up this mess. You recapture log the stuff and put it neatly in your dad's sweet wallet. You're almost done. Just one more thing to... Oh, for the love of... John, get in. <sighs> Fine. You guess you're going for a little ride. John, buckle up. Safety is the most important thing. WV, follow suit. You presume the windy boy knows what he is doing. You tug the dark sash across your chest and secure it. This is an incredible look for you. It's too bad the fashion accessory seems to trap you inside this vehicle. Human fashion and transportation and safety sure are weird and apparently interrelated. WV, ride. Your feet do not reach the little steppy levers. Your co-pilot points out that you also do not have the key. You are terribly disappointed. John, just do windy thing already. He probably would have been a terrible driver anyway. John and WV, ascend. <laughs> John, pester Jade. Hey Jade, are you there? I have a computer now. This boring guy keeps blinking at me though, and it's weird. John! Wow! Finally! Hi, sorry I disappeared after you entered the game, but from what I've seen in the clouds, it doesn't look like you've had much trouble making progress. Nope! Dave was able to set up as my server player. He is building up my house right now so that we can deploy some equipment up there. Oh, nice! Dave is serving all the ladies, isn't he? Yep. He's like a dude on Butler Island. I mean, a dude who happens to be one of the butlers, doing a lot of serving to various ladies who are vacationing at this snooty resort. Wait, I'm fucking this up. <laughs> That's okay, I won't tell him about it. Okay, good. All I'm saying is, why can't I have a Dave Butler too? Well, maybe you can. Then we'll try and put in a good word for you. Thank you. What's the equipment you're deploying? I'm not sure. Something to do with cloning, I guess? It serves some purpose in my quest as a witch of space. A nice troll named Kanai has been advising me on stuff about that. Have you talked to her? Hmm, I don't think so. Not recently, anyway. You should! A bunch of trolls are not nearly as bad as I thought. Even Carcat! He has been helping me, too. Sort of. <laughs> he has? But I thought he... hated you. Oh yeah, he said plenty of stuff like that. But I don't think he ever actually meant it. Flying off the handle is part of his charm in a funny way. 
once you know that about him. Yeah, this is what I've concluded about him as well. He's a pretty great guy. I'm looking forward to more of his outbursts, especially his first conversation with me, which I am to understand will be legendary. But we shouldn't tell him we said any of this, or he'll be furious. <laughs> so, what else have you been up to? We should try to catch up as much as possible. Yeah. Hmm, what else? There's been so much going on, it's been a little hard to keep track of it all. Why don't you tell me what you've been up to first? Oh man, you will never guess what I'm doing right now. Go ahead, try to guess. You will not succeed. Whoa! John, where did you get that nice flying car? Oh, God damn it! How do you know? Do you have Rosa's crystal ball? Sort of. She gave me the code and I made a cool pair of goggles with it. Ugh, I'm surrounded by real-life witches. Everyone I know is turning magic. It's ridiculous. Including me. I'm magic now. It certainly seems so. What with your fancy magic car and your chauffeur familiar, I guess. No, he's neither a chauffeur nor a familiar. He's actually a new friend. Also, this is not a magic car. It's an ordinary car. I found it in my dad's wallet. You did? Yeah, I just found his wallet on the ground, but my dad was nowhere to be found. Huh. The clouds let me do the wallet, though, so maybe they'll keep leading me to him. Hmm, maybe, but hang on, let me try something. Okay, I've seen a lot of interesting things in the clouds. I guess you used to see things like that all the time, right? Yes! What have you seen? Wow, uh, well, lots of things that were very mysterious and didn't make much sense, but also lots of things I recognized, like stuff I've done before and also stuff I'll do in the future, and also things that Rose and Dave have been up to, and you too! Like what? What did you see? Well, I saw you on your island, and I saw you sleeping in a floating bed, and I saw your pretty snow planet, and I saw you with some frogs. Have you found any frogs yet? Frogs? No. Well, I saw you once in a neat outfit. It was kind of like you're torn from the pages of one of my favorite Japanese mangas, and the snow was melting, and you were surrounded by frogs for some reason. Heh, <laughs> now it sounds like I'm describing a weird dream I had about you. Sure does! Which I guess is sort of true? Anyway, I guess that must not have happened yet. Nope, but that sure does sound pretty interesting. I wonder why I would be surrounded by frogs. Dunno, but you are a witch, remember? Witches love frogs. <laughs> That's true. I hope I am not planning on putting them in a cauldron or anything. I doubt it. it looked to me like a friendly gathering. Oh! Oh, and one time I saw a green version of you with pointy ears, and you were crying. Did that happen yet? Ah, uh, yes. I prototyped my dead dream self and tried to get her to fight Jack, but it turned out to be a big mistake. God, I can't believe how dumb that idea was. She was an emotional wreck. Oh no, what happened? Where is she now? Oh, she went off to cry somewhere else. Good riddance. Wow, Jade, you've really been up to a lot. <laughs> I guess so. And I've just been staring at these dumb clouds for hours or whatever, and I even saw my own dead body in a cloud. What? Oh no. It's okay though. It already happened. I was sort of tricked into sleeping on my quest bed, and when I went to sleep, Jack killed me. She must have known that would happen. Who? Riska, do you know her? I don't think so. She's pretty cool, but just between you and me, she might be a little crazy. Well, if she tricked you into getting killed, then I would have to agree. But I don't think it's really like that. Honestly, I think dying was a necessary part of the process, and she just didn't tell me so I wouldn't get scared. What process? And how are you alive now if you died? John, I'm a little confused. Well, I died on the quest bed and woke up here as my dream self. And now I have all these sweet wind powers, which is how I'm making this car fly! Oh, That makes sense. David mentioned you reached the god tier. Yeah! But he did not say what it involved. He probably didn't want to make me worried. Maybe, or he was just being some sort of aloof cool kid. Or that. But he also said that no one else would do it but you. Actually, now it makes sense that I wouldn't be able to, since my dream self is dead. It's too bad, really. Yeah. I wonder what space powers would be like. Hmm, I have no idea. Oh well. Maybe you shouldn't rule it out though. I mean, you did mention your dream self isn't completely dead, remember? Huh? You're right! I suddenly don't know if I want to become a god tier anymore. <laughs> she was that bad, huh? Ugh! I don't even want to talk about her! She is sad and cowardly. Okay, I'll try not to pry. Why don't you tell me about your new friend? He sure seems to be enjoying that horn. I know, right? Uh, he's just a silly guy I met when I woke up here. He seemed to be curious about me and followed me around for a while. Also, I noticed he was wearing my bedsheet. <laughs> what is he doing with that? I don't know, there seems to be this whole cult full of people who worship my ghost sheets. I ran into a bunch of them at the Salamander Village. They are all completely ridiculous. So I guess he's a member of the cult? Probably. You were just going to have to deal with the fact that you were becoming a famous hero, John. 
and people everywhere will idolize you. Derp, they're not idolizing me, it's my dumb bed sheets they love. It's so stupid. Oh, also another thing about him, he has the queen's ring. Huh? That's great! Don't you have to get that ring from him? I've tried. I asked him politely for it and everything, but he's very protective of it. Hmm, that is a problem. Actually, I think it's okay. I think he's supposed to keep it. You do? Yeah, once I saw something in the clouds. It was hard to tell what was going on, but I saw him. I'm pretty sure it was from the future. And he had the ring and... And what? And the clouds stopped showing me. But I was pretty sure that someday, he will have to wear it. Huh? So I think I'll just let him keep it. For some reason, I trust him. Okay, John. I trust you. So, I will trust your trust in him. Yeah, trust all around. I'm gonna be a supportive piece of shit all day and fall down all this trust. How trustworthy do you even have to be to confide in someone like that? <laughs> anyway, I guess that's enough of that nonsense. I should keep looking for my dad. Maybe if I fly around in this car with that guy beeping here, the noise will get his attention and he'll find me. John, I already found your dad. You did? Yes. I found him with my goggles almost right away! But I didn't want to interrupt you. Oh, well that sure is convenient. Where is he? He is with Rose's mom. They are in a castle having some sort of tea party together. They appear to be enjoying each other's company. It's quite adorable, actually. Oh, wow. Jade, what if they get married or something? Oh god, if Rose became my sister, that would wreak havoc on Carcat's shipping diagram. As leader of this team, I submit that we cannot afford to let this happen. Everyone, man your battle stations! Red alert! We have a ship to sink. Arm torpedoes! Auga! Target destroyed. <laughs> I'm just joking around, of course. Dear. Oh, really, John? <laughs> <laughs> but really, they make a nice couple, and I think it would be great if they got married. Yes, I agree. Even if it wouldn't make it awkward for me to marry Rose. I guess so. But me, that doesn't matter. These are kind of special circumstances. Yes, they are pretty special. I wonder if my dad and her mom would mind us getting married. I don't know. Who are they to stand between two youngsters in love? Whoa, in love? Yes, John. Two people must be in love in order to get married. It is one of the rules. Oh, geez. I guess you're right. So, what do you say, John? Are you in love with Rose? Um... And if not, are you prepared to fall in love with her? Er... Uh... Well? Ah, this line of questioning makes me flustered. All I know is I was ordered by Carcat to marry Rose. I think we could both agree that it was very reckless to look at a crappy shipping diagram made by an alien and ignore its message altogether. I didn't even know Carcat made a shipping diagram. I think it's a thing of beauty, and it will save the human race. I will have to make him show me. Yes, by the way, you will marry Dave. 100% true reality. Ugh. It's okay, though. I'll not press you on your feelings for him. I already know you're totally into the Strider anyway. What? It's all in the diagram, Jade. It's all in the diagram. I don't know about that. I clearly need to take a good hard look at this prophetic document, and possibly tell Karkat what an idiot he is. That you do. Okay, but anyway, who cares about his terrible shitty drawings and meddlesome romantic schemes? How do I find my dad? Uh, well, I don't actually know where he is relative to you. So I don't know if I can give you directions. Blah. There might be some way to do that. These goggles are actually really complicated. I will look into it and get back to you. In the meantime, why don't you fly around and keep looking? At least now you know to look for a castle. And maybe the clouds will give you some tips. Yes, that's a good idea. I'll do that. Thanks for the help, Jade. Sure. I'll talk to you later. Later. Garka, contact John. John! Carcat! What's up? I'm not sure why I'm telling you this. I guess it's just out of a sense of obligation at this point. We've come this far, so I feel like you should know. Know what? I might not make it out of this alive. This might even be the last time you hear from me. Wait, well, what the fuck am I saying? The last time you hear from me will be the first time you hear from me. Uh... I mean, this could be the last time from my perspective. Because from my perspective, I could be dead soon. Oh no, a are you in some kind of trouble? I is it Jack? Carcat, what's going on? Oh god, the honking! Why won't the honking stop? I have to go. Sorry for being such a douche to you and your friends. I hope you can succeed as a leader, where I failed miserably. This message was rather disconcerting. 
You urge your navigator to ease up on the honking for a while, since it is distracting, and in somewhat bad taste given the circumstances. You think you should try to message your friend back. John, Pester Car Cat. Car Cat! Hey buddy, you're making me worried there. Are you okay? What in the name of sweet globe tickling fuck? Egbert, I just got done erupting a whole volcano of merciless fuck you on the primitive village located squarely on your crotch. Assuming that's a suitably terrible part of human anatomy for a village in jeopardy to exist. Uh. Shut up! How dare you contact me while I'm in the middle of my backwards march of hate through your tedious timeline. Oh god, this is not right. You aren't supposed to hate me anymore. You're supposed to be kind to of my friend, sorta. When is this? What do you mean, when is this? Okay, let me just check the universal clock which keeps consistent time for all frames of reference in all planes of reality. It's half past your moron. Okay, duh, I know that. I mean, how many times have you talked to me before? We just got done with our second conversation. How can you not know this? Ugh, this isn't good. I need to talk to future you. Why? Because it sounds like you're in trouble. I think maybe you're running from Jack? Of course we're running from Jack! I just got done fucking telling you that! No, I know, but... Ugh. I guess my future conversations will instigate some misguided need for you to get in touch with me later on. What have I gotten myself into here? I swear, it never ends with the ultimate riddle shit. Even after the game is over! Even after you lose it! How unfair is that? Ultimate riddle shit? I can tell this conversation is going to be an utter fucking joy to participate in. I honestly envy anyone in the position of not having to put up with reading it. But you asked for it, John, so here we go. Are you ready? No, I just need to talk to future you. No, you don't. Take it from me. The guy is a bastard. Future Carcat, retreat into lab. You have been so busy being consumed by unspeakable horror, you didn't notice someone has been trying to contact you. Carcat, answer to Rezzy. Carcat, I have grave and serious news to report. I have discovered the scene of a real-life murder. Tavros was the victim. I'm very upset, but I'm trying to stay professional about it. This crime is not going to solve itself. I have conducted my preliminary forensic analysis of the scene, but my findings have been mostly inconclusive. I am only pretending to think there is any chance it was not Friska, because otherwise it wouldn't be fun. Anyway, I just wanted to warn you, there is a bloodthirsty murderer on the loose, and you should be careful out there. Now, I must attempt to revive the victim. Carcat. You cannot even imagine what this smells like. But I pride myself on being a true professional as well as an excellent friend. I will be away from my glasses for just a moment, so if you get this message, please be patient. Terezi? Are you there? Oh, fuck. Is Tavros dead too? Terezi, listen to me. You have to get out of there. Friska is the least of our problems. Wait. Uh, forensic analysis? Are you fucking insane? Put your fucking glasses back on! God damn it! Honk. Ah! Oh fuck, oh fuck, oh fuck, oh fuck, oh fuck, oh fuck, oh fuck! Carcat, examine Sullux. You wish you would wake up. You could really use someone with awesome powers right now, being awake and not useless. Oh god, are those his teeth on the floor? Carcat, put teeth back in. There. Good as new best friend. It's like it never happened. No one can ever blame you for dropping him down the stairs now. Stairs? What stairs? <laughs> huh. Carcat, contact Aquius. You were hoping it wouldn't have to come to this. But you're running out of options. You need backup. Strong backup. Aquius, are you there? Yes. Okay, good. Are you still really strong? Like... Is that still your thing? I am still exceptionally strong. Strength continues to be my strongest attribute. Oh, okay, good. I guess that was a pretty dumb question. I need your help. With what? Gamzee is on a rampage. He's going to kill us all if we don't stop him. You mean... the high blood? What? 
Yeah, I guess. Oh dear. What? Are you saying the High Blood has finally embraced his position atop the hierarchy? No, I'm saying he fucking snapped and wants to murder us all. Yes, exactly. Damn it! Why does this conversation have to be so predictably terrible? All I'm asking you to do, no, ordering you to do, is go find Gamzee and beat him to death with your bare hands or possibly two halves of a broken bow before he kills anyone else. I certainly appreciate the debauchery inherent in receiving an order of such gravity from a rogue-blooded foul mouth. But I'm not entirely positive I can raise a hand to the high blood. It wouldn't be my place. Oh my god! Why do you have to be so difficult in all the most fucked up ways possible? You're getting off on this, aren't you? Uh... If you ask me for a towel, I'm going to flip my shit right off this fucking meteor. It will just be me spinning and spinning and spinning into endless nothing screaming. No, I have a sufficient supply of drying utilities. I forbid you from getting off on any of this. Don't get off on my orders. Don't get off on phrases like fuck, fuck, fuckity, fuck. And don't get off on any sort of weird admiration you might be harboring for a murderous clown with purple blood. The blood. It is just so exquisitely purple. Are you listening to me? Yes, but look. The situation is very delicate, I believe. The high blood would benefit from a proper enculturation into the aristocracy. I don't think he gives a shit about your etiquette lessons, or how a true gentleman is to go about handling a proper fucking horse teed. Seriously, people are in danger here. I'll take measures to ensure our comrades aren't injured. Okay, and? Well. But you won't fight him, is that it? If it comes to close quarter skirmish, I will try to be prepared. How fucking reassuring. You are such an idiot. I don't get it. You kiss the ground this lunatic walks on because he has purple blood. But that doesn't stop you from ripping on Aridin. I know for a fact you don't like him. And his blood is even purpler, isn't it? Yes, that's different. He is a sea dweller. Our feud is codified in tradition. Nay, we are obliged to be at odds. It's dignified. Okay, fine. Then speaking of which, he's on a murderous rampage too. He is? How many of us are rampaging murderously exactly? I don't know. At least three, probably? But who even knows at this point? The point is, if you see him, would you mind snapping his stupid wand in half or something? And then choke him to death with the shitty pretentious scarf? Do I really have to? God, what is the problem now? I'd prefer not to interact with him. Why? It's primarily that his advances make me uncomfortable. <laughs> I would high-five you if it wouldn't shatter every bone in my hand. And if you didn't smell terrible. But seriously, if you could carry out my orders in the least perverse way possible, that would be great. Just kill one or more of these assholes and get back to me, okay? I need you to come through for me, because we're running out of manpower here. We are? Yes, didn't I mention? Fafari, Kanaya, and Tavros are dead, Solix is unconscious, and Terezi is missing. Oh god, I hope she's okay. I should probably go look for her. Oh shoot. Excuse my vulgarity. I'll let it slide. Just do what I say, okay? I will look into it. Terezi, return to computer lab. You foolishly misplaced your glasses during your heroic revival attempt, leaving you with no way of communicating with the others to warn them. This is why you really should carry no less than five computers on you at all times like a sensible person. But there is no one in here. Just someone taking a nap on the horn pile over there. And a big puddle of something next to the transportalizer. Grub sauce, maybe? You hope it's grub sauce. Please be grub sauce. Trezzy. Sample sauce. Someone either had a major sauce accident earlier, or this is the scene of yet another real-life murder. Your team is so lucky to have you around to sleuth these heinous crimes. And yet, the body is missing. Can't conduct much forensic analysis without it. This is exactly why you should never turn your back on a body, not even for a second. 
Dr. Rezzi examined Hornbile. This was no nap. This was... another murder. What is going on in this lab? Terezi, examine body. Another textbook impaling. Your perp has been busy tonight. Wait. There appears to be a pair of smaller marks on the victim's neck. Terezi, examine marks. Hmm. Has the killer really developed a taste for blood? She is completely out of control. According to your expert analysis, she barged in here with a lance, her new weapon of choice. This startled everyone in the room so much it triggered a dreadful grub saw spill and or chainsaw accident, causing the missing victim to lose a large volume of blood and or grub saws. Horrified by the sight, everyone fled the room except for the present victim who was napping on the horn pile. The perpetrator in her deranged state of mind then sampled the spilt green blood slash sauce from the floor. Her thirst peaked. She became tempted by the buffet of rich royal blood on the horn pile, dragged a trail of green from the puddle to the horns, and helped herself to the victim's neck. The victim undoubtedly woke up midway through the gruesome feast, fought back, and got a lance through the chest for her trouble. The perp then fled into the lab, thirsty for more. Yes, you were quite sure that... that... that your theory doesn't make a lick of sense! You wish you had your crack team of experts to advise you. If only you hadn't kicked them all into the bottomless pit, along with probably her glasses accidentally. Damn their insubordination!